you know, I really was the guinea pig for my parents when it came to homeschooling. And that sentence never ends well. This is Brayden Sorbo, and he is the son of Kevin Sorbo. I'm sure you probably remember him from Hercules and, and stuff. Yeah, right here on the right. This is Kevin Sorbo right here. Well, Brayden is old enough to repeat his parents' propaganda now. So I wanted to see what he had to say. I want to see if he is just as psychotic as his parents. He's uh, just right out the gate. He's pushing one of his books here. Listen to this. I wrote a book, which ironically, Mike Lindell was one of the endorsers of. This is going to be psychotic. I can already feel it. <laughs> Okay, so his mom is named Sam Sorbo. If you've never heard of her before, she does the right-wing talk show circuit talking about homeschooling and how important it is and blah, blah, blah. I'll let her explain why she feels it's important. This clip is from late July 2022. Check this out. Why the rebranding? So the first thing that you learn in school is you have to raise your hand to ask a question. That's a deterrent. I think the first thing I learned was like my ABCs, right? I don't think it was learning to hold my hand up, but whatever, whatever, you know, give her a pass on that. What was all that now? Ask a question. That's a deterrent. That's actually teaching you viscerally because you, you embody it. Don't ask. That actually. You're telling me you think that raising your hand means don't ask a question at all? What? Embody it. Don't ask. That actually eventually becomes trust the expert. That's not education. Raising your hand in school is the precursor to trust the experts. Or alternatively, maybe having to raise your hand in school is a necessity because there are like, I don't know, 500 students per school, sometimes 2,000, at least 20 to 30 kids per classroom. And if all of them just started yelling out all at once, it would be complete panic and mayhem. But okay, yeah, I, I suppose it could be your thing too. <laughs> that's not education. That's not a thinking person. That's a non-thinking person. That's what the schools are turning out. That's what school produces. School produces people that trust experts. Wow. Shame on people for trusting experts, huh? Oh my God, dude. So you already know where we are with this, right? I mean, you can see this coming now. Check this one out. This is actually the very first clip I ever saw of Sam Sorbo. This one was from early December, 2021. She was at a Reawaken America conference or whatever. And um, yeah, just listen. But I pulled my son out of school in second grade because they weren't educating him. They were training him a little it wasn't going well. They weren't educating. They were training. I'm not sure what the difference is. And okay, so it wasn't going well. Go on. It wasn't going well. And I started to question, what was, what was the final result going to be? He was learning how to be a bully. Because let's face it, in school, they teach you evolution. What is evolution? Survival of the fittest. And what is that? That's bullying. She's blaming evolution on her kid being a bully. Really? Does it get any more disconnected from reality than this? You know what? I understand now. I understand why she went on this whole thing about how important it is to homeschool and schools are indoctrinating kids because she didn't presumably didn't want to accept that her son was a bully. And she would go to any lengths to convince herself that it was somebody else's fault other than hers and her husband Kevin's quick interjection this won't take long if you like what I do I'd appreciate it if you watch the video to the end YouTube bases video reach off of watch time so watching even an extra minute makes the video go further liking and subscribing goes a long way too finally it would be awesome if you guys checked out my patreon all links are in the description of course okay back to the video Christians have no business sending their children to public school so anyway that's the the stand that she took and that she continued to take throughout Braden Sorbo's entire life. I want to watch more Braden Sorbo clips in a second, but I just want to give you a little bit more context for the types of people we're dealing with in case you never heard of these people before. On the left is Candace Taylor. On the right is Kevin Sorbo, Braden's dad. Just listen to what he has to say about atheists here. This one is from late January 2023. 
These people look in the mirror every day and hate what they see. These are angry, angry people. These are people that have no hope in their lives. Talking about atheists. They probably don't work. They probably collect unemployment uh, from your dollars and my dollars. They Tell me you don't understand how unemployment works without telling me that you don't understand it. Unemployment is an insurance that companies pay into. Every company is required to pay into unemployment insurance. And when somebody loses their job because of a layoff or something, not because of some wrongdoing, it has to be because of a layoff, very specific reasons, then you can collect unemployment. I think you can be fired for it too, but it has to be specific circumstances. And the amount of unemployment that you receive from unemployment insurance payouts is directly proportional to the amount of money that you've made in your life, I believe. And you only receive it for like nine months or something. Like It's really, really complicated. And it's really a free market system that exists. I, I believe it's mandated to exist by the government, but the free market, you know, pays into it and controls it completely, basically. But okay, yeah, totally. So these atheists are living on unemployment permanently, in perpetuity, because that's just the kind of people they are. Go on. Probably don't work. They probably collect unemployment uh, from your dollars and my dollars. They probably from their dollars. Has Kevin Sorbo ever paid a dime into unemployment? He's always been an employee, right? Does he own a company and run it? Is he the business manager for a company? Companies are the ones that play uh, that pay unemployment. I think the the I think the employee might pay a little bit in unemployment. I'm not sure. Quick note before we continue, I'm writing a book about my experiences inside the religion of Jehovah's Witnesses. I cover the culture and doctrine. It's understandable even if you know literally nothing about the religion, so I'd appreciate it if you gave it a read. To find out more, go to owenmorgan.com book. All links are in the description, of course. Okay, back to the video. They probably don't work. They probably collect unemployment uh, from your dollars and my dollars. They probably uh, get paid by George Soros as well. But these are people that really have so much disappointment that their lives didn't turn out the way they wanted to. These trolls are people. I know. So disappointed. My life is aw is awful. It's absolutely terrible. Depressed all the time. Anxious, sad. It's just the worst. But you know what? Listening to Kevin act like a fool brings a little bit of joy to my otherwise bleak life. <laughs> Seriously, like he does he really believe this about people that all atheists are just sad, miserable, empty, angry people who have awful lives and are unemployed, but apparently employed by George Soros? What? Trolls are people that just have nothing but anger and hatred. They live in this black hole. They want to suck all of us down that black hole with them by attacking you, attacking me. Look, I'm not attacking anybody. I'm just playing the things that you say. That's it. I don't even need to add commentary. I do, obviously, but I don't need to. It's crazy in its own right. Stands on its own. Well, like you said something really powerful while ago, and I was going to point it out, so I'm glad it just got brought back up. But you said something to the effect of, why do you get so angry about something you don't believe in? Yeah, because that is a completely 100% original thought to Kevin Sorbo. And that's almost certainly the first time that this woman had ever heard that, that saying before, right? I hear that constantly. Why are you angry at something that doesn't exist? I'm not. I'm not angry at something that doesn't exist. Actually, you know what? Kevin Sorbo played in God's Not Dead, and that was a scene in God's Not Dead where this atheist professor, this angry, mean, evil atheist professor was trying to force Christians to renounce their Christianity or they would fail the class. He finally revealed by the end of the movie that he didn't not believe in God. He hated God. Take that extra step. This is these people are insane. I just got brought back up, but you said something to the effect of why do you get so angry about something you don't believe in? Mm. Yeah. That was that's powerful. And it's true. And I think it's because they do believe in something. They may be angry because they were sexually abused or they were physically abused or they didn't. Me? OK, so she thinks that I'm angry for reasons that are completely unconnected to God. And that anger is directed toward God, I guess. Feel love or they felt rejection and maybe they turned away from God and the idea of God because of that. But there's definitely something inside of them that feels anger towards something. Yeah. Well, these are people who failed. They failed in their lives and they gave up. 
Wow. Failed in life. I guess, uh, yeah, I should just give up. I mean, I haven't given up yet, but he's 100% right. Should just give up, right? This is insane. Absolutely insane and sad. I, I don't feel angry. I don't feel angry toward God. I don't feel angry toward my parents. I don't feel angry toward anything or anybody. I don't hate anybody for anything. I just want people to understand that I don't believe in this and show them that they don't have to believe in this either. They don't have to bend their will to an extremist organization or to a controlling organization. They don't have to do that. I'm disgusted at how Jehovah's Witnesses, as an overarching organization, has operated and taken advantage of people. That That's kind of disturbing. But I'm not like, I don't hate God or whatever. Okay, so you should have an idea of who this kid's parents are now and, and the things that they say and do. Let's talk about Braden Smith. If you notice... This fine-looking gentleman here has a shirt that says the future is patriarchy. It started with satire. All this stuff about the patriarchy being evil and the left talking about patriarchy, 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 patriarchy all the time. They started making fun of it satirically. The, the right did. And eventually it came to the point where they're wearing shirts that, that unironically say the future is patriarchy. Is, th is this satire? I have no reason to believe this is satire. It's not even funny in any way. It's not ironic or anything. This is real, right? As, you know, I really was the guinea pig for my parents when it came to homeschooling. And frankly, I would have to say I turned out all right. You know, I wrote a book. I would beg to differ, good sir. Seems we're at a disagreement. I would have to say I turned out all right. You know, I wrote a book, which ironically, Mike Lindell was one of the endorsers of. Hey, writing a book is the gauge to for anybody to see if they're doing all right. If they turned out all right, they'll be capable of writing a book, of course. That's why that guy that wrote that book, Donald J. Trump, the Son of Man, the Christ, is such a completely stable genius. If he could pump a book out, he can do anything. And I'm going to self-plug. If people want to get it at sorbostudios.com, they can. But I really you know, don't see any any reason not to homeschool, especially now. I mean, the number of homeschoolers in the past three years has more than doubled. I believe we have over 5 million families across the United States that are home educating their children. And it's phenomenal kind of to see the, the, the growth in that community because it really is a, a group that is expanding rapidly over the past couple of years. And it's great to see. No, it's not great to see. I was homeschooled for a time and I personally believe that homeschooling should be illegal. I don't believe that people should have that option, except for very specific, special circumstances. And by the way, that circumstance is not religious belief. Religion doesn't exempt you from laws. I, I believe that it's so easy to turn into child abuse or neglect at the very least. Being in isolation away from anybody else, like solitary confinement, that will mess your head up for real. That will mess you up. And that is straight up abuse. Solitary confinement, that's abuse. Unfortunately, with homeschooling, you have to actively take extra steps to make sure that that does not happen for your kid. So unless this person is actively taking steps, they are abusing their kid, in my opinion. It's simply wrong to homeschool your kid. Now, I, I don't know if this kid turned out all right or not. You know what? Sam Sorbo had all the time in the world. She could do whatever she wanted because she's filthy rich because of her husband. So, great. She has the time to homeschool her kid. She can devote 40 hours a week to it or whatever. But not everybody has that. Anyway, Braden Smith appeared on Newsmax, and I wanted to listen to what else he had to say. Uh, it's just like a variety of different subjects that he hits while he's on here. Just to give you an idea of the type of person he is. This is Braden. Uh, I keep saying Braden Smith. Maybe I'm thinking Jaden Smith. My mistake. It, this is Braden Sorbo. Braden Sorbo giving his thoughts on trans sports. You know this is going to be psychotic. So parents and like just plain normal people of all stripes are pushing back more and more on the whole idea of like transgender women, uh, which is a male, uh, a biological male. We, we don't even need to say that. Playing in then why did you say it if everybody knows that that's what you believe? Jesus Christ, the virtue signaling. Say that. Playing in women's sports. The whole nonsense is just crazy. Like, I don't even want to go down this road of whether or not it's 
useful to ban people from sports or whatever. You know, I'm going to leave it up to the sports leagues themselves and the people who run the tests and make the determinations. I mean, these people in the Olympics or in the sports leagues in the, in Europe or whatever, they have extremely stringent testing. For example, there's a guy who had no legs and he had blades that kind of curved downward for feet that helped him run. And they did testing to see if these blades gave him an advantage in any way. They really dug into it. These sports organizations will really dig into it and make a determination. And to my knowledge, sports organizations have determined that there is no difference, effectively. No, um, what's the word I'm looking for? God, my mind is just slipping tonight. No um, relevant difference. Even in sports, there's no difference. As long as the trans person is taking their testosterone or estrogen or whatever to keep their levels exactly within a specific range that roughly matches up with other women, then it's fine. So that's all I'm going to say on it. I really don't care. I don't care about sports at all. And I don't see why anybody else does either about this specific issue, but okay. Sense is this crazy. Uh, Brandon, do you, th Brady, do you think this is going to continue or not? Until something happens, where a state signs into law that you have to be biologically a female to play in women's sports or biologically man to play in, in men's sports. I Hey, isn't it interesting that sports leagues have not done that yet? Huh. Wonder why. You think maybe because it's effectively pointless, makes no difference because they've done the studies? Maybe? Just throwing it out there. To biologically man to play in, in men's sports, I personally don't think anything's going to happen. I mean, it's a good thing that I was good at the sports I played when I was a kid, so I didn't have the desire to chop off any genitals and go, you know, <laughs> beat women in swimming or basketball or football or baseball, whatever sport, you know, <laughs> you name it. So this kid thinks that people are turning trans because they're not good at sports and transitioning will make them good at sports, I guess. What? Get help, bro. Get help. This one is Brayden Sorbo giving us his wokest moment of 2023. The woman that came on just before him said she thought the wokest moment was when Bud Light sponsored um, Dylan Mulvaney or whatever. Brayden, what do you think? If you can remember back during the year, what was the, the wokest, the craziest? The worst story, the wokest thing that's happened this year was San Francisco cleaning up the streets for Chinese President Xi Jinping. That, that wasn't a woke Thing. What are you talking about? Xi Jinping visited California in 2023, and they arranged to have a certain number of blocks cordoned off with only specific people in there for security reasons and because he's a dictator and, you know, they want to have good relations and you got to do that for a dictator. Anyway, they also got a bunch of Chinese students, I believe, to be around waving the Chinese flag and stuff like that. That wasn't them cleaning up the streets. That was them just sectioning off blocks. Okay, go on. Uh, but that's wokeism, right? The left has gone too far. For Chinese President Xi Jinping, that was <laughs> overall the worst thing that, because it shows that we have the capability to clean up the streets and to take care of the problems, but we refuse to do it, which- Wait, wait, wait. Is this kid saying that he wants to put- money into cleaning up streets and taking care of problems in society usually when i hear these people talk like kevin sorbo he's telling me how that w that's communism and you, you got to take money out of his pocket to do it and he doesn't want that because that's communism and socialism both at the same time apparently this kid wants to clean streets up fyi i don't know what california's like i've only been through the la airport before i don't think i've been there in person just out on the ground, but I live in New York City. This is a beautiful, clean city. Seriously, New York City is not dangerous. It's not dirty. It doesn't have a whole bunch of homeless people around even. It's fantastic, honestly. It's a fantastic city in every way, truthfully. Only downside is it, it's really expensive. But the reason that there aren't any homeless people on the street is because of a law that passed in New York City, basically, the, the law is something to the effect of you have the right to a bed if you want one. They build shelters 
and they will allow you to stay in a bed if you want a bed. So the people that are out there on the street, not very many of them. I've only seen a couple. In fact, I haven't seen any this winter. They're out there because they want to be, if they are out there. Okay, from June 2023, this is NPR. It says, Homeless, homelessness in New York City has hit levels that haven't been seen since the Great Depression. The advocacy group, the Coalition for the Homeless, says that as of March, there were more than 75,000 people sleeping in city shelters each night. Okay, shelters, yes, not on the street. This includes thousands of children and recent migrants to the U.S. are also among those without stable housing. Homeless Bill of Rights is now in effect in the city. The new law explicitly acknowledges the right to sleep outdoors with some limitations and the right to apply for rental aid. Also gives people the right to complain about shelter conditions without repercussions. Oh, here. Yeah. Okay. This is it. This is from a guy named Fidel. What an unfortunate name. Mayor Adams allowed this bill to go into law. He didn't veto it, but he's also challenging New York City's right to shelter law, which requires the city to provide shelter to anyone who requests it. It's a little bit more than that, but okay, sure. And this is coming in light of the influx of people who are unhoused, asylum seekers who are in New York. Is this a contradiction? Wow, asylum seekers need a place to stay until their asylum request goes through? The gall. Anyway, the point is that New York City is taking care of these people, and I couldn't be happier about it. It's fantastic. It looks great out there, all over New York City, not just in Manhattan, not just in the Bronx, not just in Queens or Brooklyn. It looks great in New York City. So I don't, I don't want to hear about any of this nonsense. The cities are, you know, falling to pieces, and it's just mayhem all the time, and blah, blah, blah. It's just complete nonsense. It's not true at all. But okay, go ahead. Keep telling me about how these Democrat-run cities are just hellholes. We have the capability to clean up the streets and to take care of the problems, but we refuse to do it, which... No, they're clean. ...signifies something far worse than a lot of what I've noticed in, in politics and in social media today. Aside from the fact that TikTok has such, and China itself, has such a massive hold on the U.S. and the population, it is, it's really terrifying. Uh, so I just thought of another one. Okay. okay, that wasn't a woke moment. Like I said, that's just nonsensical and absurd. Uh, so this guy thought of another one, apparently. All right, lay it on me, bud. By the way, uh, somebody mentioned that California is where homeless people go a lot. That's true. You're right. That is where a lot of homeless people go. But New York City had homeless encampments on the street corners for a while also. I've seen a couple of homeless encampments when I first moved here. But since they did the right to shelter law or whatever it is, those encampments are just gone. Like people aren't on the street anymore. They're just staying inside. They have a place to stay. That's what's important. It's possible that California could do the exact same thing. I mean, yeah, it would be difficult and a strain and everything. But you know what? California has a ton of money. They could make it work. Anyway, let's listen to this guy Give us his wokest moment of 2023. I thought of another one, okay? <laughs> you saw this. Canadian Prime Minister, the effeminate Justin Trudeau, is now requiring free feminine hygiene products in male restrooms. <laughs> okay. Really? I'm sorry. Hard doubt on this one. I cannot believe this without some evidence. He's requiring that in what restrooms? In Walmart restrooms or in like fast food restaurant restrooms or in park restrooms like which ones are supposed to have this and why would he require that honestly it's such a niche issue that applies to nearly nobody that it can be dealt with without putting in these uh these dispensers or whatever a and aside from that He's making life better for people, even if it were true. Let's just assume for a moment it is. He's making life better for people. Why is that bad? If he has the money in Canada to put into certain projects, which he does, why not this project? And, and by the way, what does effeminate mean exactly in this context? He's saying that he's, like, he, he's girly, right? Okay. I, I, I don't think so, but whatever. Let's find out if this is real, actually. Hang on, men's room. Oh, this is a New York Post. All right, the thing is, um, I don't trust any source that is talking about this right now. New York Post, don't trust them. I, I don't trust them for anything. 
Fox News, don't trust him. Daily Mail, nope. These are all absurd, nonsensical propaganda networks. I'm uh, the post millennial. I don't know what the post millennial is. Hang on. Apparently, we don't have a listing for the post millennial. I'm not sure what it is. Post millennial is Andy No's website. Oh, is it really? Okay, I didn't know that. Thank you, Amy, uh, Amy Walden. Okay, Andy No is insane. Oh my God, he's nuts. Trudeau's providing free tampons and men's bathrooms on Parliament Hill. Oh, so it was one very specific spot then, is what you're saying. Is it even true? I have no idea. I can't verify it. I can't fact check this because the only places that are talking about it are opinion websites. There's no factual news website reporting on this. If Reuters reported on this, it would be trustworthy. If AP News reported on this, it'd be trustworthy. BBC America, um, Independent. I mean, there are a variety of news networks that are very trustworthy and largely unbiased. Those are all unbiased. The Independent may have a slight left-leaning bias. But, I, you know, it's not to be found anywhere on any of those. Is this even real? <laughs> so, Braden, this is, uh, this is good, I think, for men who menstruate, right? Oh, well, obviously, it's for trans men, if it's even real, which I'm not conceding. It would be for trans men. You know what? Forever ago, I remember there was a... Uh, well, God, what was his name? Was it... Ted Bundy or something. Anyway, dude in Oregon, I think, um, basically did like a government coup against their capital and hold up a bunch of guys, like 50 guys in the state capitol building or something and tried to force negotiation with the FBI or something. It, it was forever ago, like 10 years ago or something. And one of the congressmen in the area, Matt Shea, passed in information from the FBI to those people secretly. He got kicked out of Congress for some crazy thing like, God, what was it? Was it, it wasn't treason. What was it? Sedition, maybe? I don't remember. Anyways, the guys that were holed up in that building were requesting people send tampons. The guys were. You know why? They're good for bullet wounds. Why don't we start this big push for tampons so that we can, the, as guys, you know, take care of our bullet wounds when the government inevitably comes for us with our guns, right? Well, I mean, frankly, I'm not surprised it is him. He does need those products, so <laughs> can we blame him? I don't understand. Why is that funny, and, and what does it even mean? Evita, does this make your blood boil? I mean, seriously, how insane are we? These are does it make your blood boil? That is sad, right? Does it make your blood boil? That's what these people live off of. Fake, fabricated outrage. These are supposed to be leaders of countries and adults who are playing this game. And they know it's a game. Clearly, nobody thinks this is right. I mean, nobody thinks this is real except for these people. Anyways, Braden, not, not Braden Smith. I keep mistaking it. Anyways, Braden Sorbo is following in his parents' footsteps. A anybody surprised by that? Honestly, sad. Did the kid ever have a chance with parents like this? Tell me what you think in the comments.